Hi everyone, it's Jerry. The 2004 Under 12 World Chess Championship had quite the field of talented players. The game I'm about to share with you is a nice attack by the young Ding Lerin. 12 year old Ding Lerin has the white pieces. He's rated 2231. And his opponent is 11 year old Wesley So, who has a rating of zero. Still unrated, Wesley So. And it wouldn't be until a couple months later he would get his first rating, eventually coming in at 2165. So these two players would eventually cross that magical 2800 barrier. There's only ever been 15 players to accomplish that feat. Now, if you're wondering how they finished in the event, I know I was curious about that. Uh, Ding Lerin finished second with 9.5 out of 11, really a tie for first. He was beat out on tie breaks by Zhao Nan. Wesley So finished in 13th with 7.5 out of 11. And one final note before we dive into this game. There was another player in this field who would also one day cross the 2800 barrier. Finishing in 10th place with 7.5 out of 11, one Fabiano Caruana. Okay, who knows, this very pairing right here could be the next World Chess Championship matchup. On board with C5, this is an invitation to a Sicilian. White only needs to play E4, and there we go, Sicilian defense. This invitation is declined. White goes for a fianchetto. And an early battle in this game over the d4 square. So far, every black move, directly or indirectly, is focused on d4. Bishop's ready to play here soon enough. Okay, from here e5, another move directed at d4. And white gets d4 in right now before it's too late. Try and do it one move later. Black's going to have too many on that. d4 square. So d4 on move 5. Cd, cd. e4. White hops in the center. And an early pop quiz on this move 7. I'll throw it to you as a multiple choice. Everybody's a fan of multiple choice, right? This guy here. He is under fire. How should you defend it? A, B, or C? If you'd like to go ahead and pause the video, what would you come up with? Okay, in this game, Wesley goes with B, moves the F pawn. Considered best is choice A to go with the D pawn. And I imagine this is, you know, one of the points that Wesley took something away from me from, from this game as a young player sure in reviewing this to play the f5 move you know this weakens the king side there's already one open diagonal towards the king and now there's a second to make this kind of a weakness so early on probably asking for trouble with still all pieces on board there's only been a pawn uh, one pawn exchange, so it's a very, very committal move to go with the F pawn. Whereas when you go with the D pawn, well, this guy's happy. You have another pawn in the center. This is the more productive way to be defending E4 right now. One other note is if you're considering choice C, this does potentially run into an irritating pin. It's an additional move white has available to him right now. So d4, excuse me, d5 is considered best in this game, f5. Knight c3, bishop g7, bishop f4. That point is now secure. And knight g to e7. Next move, very nice by white. I should mention that another... This is another moment to play d5 right here, but d5 never hits. In this game, knight g to e7. And now here we go, knight to c4. A move that would not 
be available to white if this guy was already in the center. So what is white looking to do with this last move? This is already a critical moment in the game. This is where black goes wrong and white is winning for the rest of the game. This is a very high level game by the young Ding Loren. White is eyeing up clearly this d6 square looking to give check. Now, the best move in this position is to yet again play d5 and after this check, follow up and defend d4 like this. Okay. As mentioned, d5 never comes. Black misses a really sharp idea by white. He ends up picking up the d4 pawn. Okay. There are two ways this pawn can be captured. If the bishop is capturing the pawn, there's going to be a serious problem. And here's how white could follow up. If the bishop captures here, knight d6 check, and then queen b3. And it's not so easy to stop the queen from getting to f7. Okay. It says you have to like throw a knight in the way, give up a full piece so that your queen could come over here to defend. Big problems if you're taking with the bishop. But even here, there's still a big problem after knight takes on d4. Can you spot Ding Lurin's next move? If you'd like to go ahead and pause the video. What's the star move in this position? Okay, here we go. Bishop to h6, trying to distract this guy from defense of the knight. Now, in this game, the knight falls back to e6, defending the bishop. But let's have a look at what might happen if the bishop is captured. White would first insert this check. Black is now uncastled. And then take the knight. And we could see these diagonals really being an issue for the black king. What is black now going to do about queen takes rook? If you move the rook, well, that's already game over. What other options might there be? Bishop here defends the rook and f6. But after queen c4, how are you stopping this? Suggestion here is to take the knight, but now after this recapture, we still see problems on these two diagonals. What are you doing about queen takes rook? What are you doing about queen f6? Here's a funny line. If the king scoots over to defend the rook, white could still take the rook because <laughs> you would have this fork in the end. And after the smoke clears, white is up a rook. Okay. There's some sharp continuations there if the bishop is captured. In this game, knight e6. Bishop takes bishop. Knight takes bishop follows. There goes the check. And king to f8. So there were a couple moments in this game where I thought to myself, wow, that's, you know, the moves played by white are showing some nice restraint. There are some tempting moments in this game, a couple tempting moments, a couple tempting moves. This is one of those moments in my estimation. In the game, queen d2 is played. What might be a tempting move? Queen b3, threatening mate. But after knight to e6, that defends queen f7, mate, but this knight is not defended when the queen is on b3, so queen d2. White recognizes this has a, a nice uh, response to a queen b3, knight e6. So it's the simple queen d2. Keeping things defended, this knight is secure. The queen also eyes up a weak square h6. Okay, from here, a6, queenside castles, so with this last move, we're getting the king safe. We're also maybe freeing up the queen to go elsewhere. 
She doesn't have to watch over the knight if there's some pressure on the knight. The rook is defending now. From here, b5. And now another sharp move here by team white, g5. Trying to break down the kingside structure. So there are a couple ways to try and sneak in to f7. That's one when the queen was on home base, going to b3 and then f7. But here's another path, f4 into f7. So white's trying to distract this pawn, trying to get rid of this pawn so queen f4 could hit with check. Okay. Follow up here is h6, which cuts out any possibilities of queen h6. Rook is now defending that point. From here, pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes pawn. There's now an open line here for a rook. This can show up. And by this point, there's also sacrifices, and we see just that. Bishop takes e4 here. Black does not take the bishop at this moment, at least. In the game, rook b8 is played. What's happening if the bishop is captured? The queen could go to f4 with check. Let's say king here. We could have a check here. And then knight takes pawn. No good answer, really, to knight to f6. Also, there's this move right around the corner as well. Okay. So, bad news if you take the bishop here. Rook b8 in this game. Rook h to g1. This is one of the benefits of that g4 pawn break. This guy is now invited into the party. Every white piece is doing something. And... Completely backward development here for Team Black. From here, Rook H7. Not a fun move to play at all. Just do a Rook comparison, or Knight comparison, or really in every piece type of comparison. Every, every white piece is really, really good right now. Queen D4, looking to sneak into F6. Pawn takes Bishop. Queen F6, check. King G8. Knight d5. We're just one move out from resignation in this position right here. Look at the black pieces. They are functioning on two ranks, and the white pieces are functioning on six. Okay, these are some really, really scary white knights. How does this finish up? Knight c6. That knight was in a pin. The knight is there defending one patient move. I was saying earlier, some nice restraint by white by playing queen d2 rather than the tempting queen b3. Here is that last point right here, the final move of this game by white. How tempting it may be to go to f7 with check. This is, of course, winning as well, but white spots the very best move. Final move of this game, queen g6, black resigns. This square is kept open for potentially a knight in some cases, and white is simply looking to drop the knight into f6 with check and take the rook on h7. There's no answer to this last move. Black simply resigns. No stopping knight to f6. You're going to have to give up the queen shortly. So... Very nice attacking game here by the young Ding Liren, 12-year-old Ding Liren. I hope you enjoyed this one. Feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback in the comments section below. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it. That's all for now. Take care.